Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'm after those bare necessities. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Grizzly Man, which came out in 2005, written and directed by Werner Herzog. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, this is a bit different than what we normally do, because this is a documentary telling the story of Timothy Treadwell. Timothy Treadwell spent 13 summers living with bears up in Alaska and felt like he'd become accustomed to them and become part of their natural existence. But tragically, he and his girlfriend were killed in the 13th summer by a grizzly bear. And Werner Herzog leads us through a documentary letting us ask the question, was Timothy crazy or living his life? So yeah, this is going to be an interesting review because this will be an interpretation of Werner Herzog's interpretation of Timothy Treadwell's footage. Yes. <laughs> because that's what this is. Uh, Werner Herzog, who is a well-known German director. This is only his second production that we've done. The, it the is, first yeah. one was Aguirre, Wrath of God. That's right. And, you know, this director is known as being incredibly pessimistic. Yeah. Um, but he siphoned through over a hundred hours of recorded tape from Timothy with his time with the Bears and assembled nearly two hours of that footage into a narrative yeah. whilst also filming additional sequences and interviews to supplement the documentary. And I find it interesting that Werner Herzog, a known pessimist, has his main subject who is an incredible optimist. Yes. He's deluded, but but still an optimist. I mean, if you could just watch me here, how much I love them, how much I adore them, how respectful I am to them, how I am one of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nobody else I think could have done this other than Werner Herzog. I mean, he even says at the beginning of the video that the thing that caught his eye was uh, Timothy's videotapes of outside nature you know the natural landscape that we all see those fucking great but, mountains and the fields but you and stuff. can easily look at werner's other films like yes. Aguirre and you know it's man against nature yeah yeah but there's there's just there's just that line with this film as well where like i said you're either on one side where you say well you know, Timothy was living his life the way he wanted to. He was free. He was he was unchained by society. He was out there doing what he loved, being with with being with these majestic creatures, and just you know doing something that a lot of us would fucking give our left arm for, you know. But then you could be on the other side of the line. What the fuck was he doing, spending all these time? with grizzly bears. Now, I never knew about this guy. I'd heard of the film, um, and part of me was like, well, why do I really want to watch a documentary about a guy who gets killed by a bear when the fact he was living with bears? You know, he 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 lived his life to the extreme. That's the way I kind of see it. You know, he was, he was dancing with danger every time he went out there. I don't really need to watch a documentary about it. But then sitting down and watching it, for the review and, and taking the notes, you know, my mind started to just think of other things that I could put next to Timothy. You know, he, like I said, a lot of people would look at him and go, fucking hell, that guy is crazy. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but he spent 12, almost 13 happy summers doing what he loved. And that's all anybody ever wants to do, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that, that is special if you get to do what you love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And But the thing is, what he was doing was very dangerous. And everybody had told him that. Yes. That you cannot just go and live happily with bears. You know, it's it was almost like he went into the Disney universe. He was anthropomorphizing these animals. You know, he was giving them names. Yes. He was giving them human characteristics. He was treating them kind of like pets. Or, or human beings. And he was, just, yeah. It didn't work. Well, it, it doesn't work usually, but it's, you know, it's, the, it's the problem that most society has is that we do that with animals. We do it with cars. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. But only when they're domesticated. Well, yeah. You know, when you domesticate a car, you know, you know where it is and it's just going to do its own thing unless a green meteorite comes over and makes it come to life. But when you're doing it with a wild car, you know, out in the plains... 
You don't, those things are crazy. <laughs> Here's my friend, Timmy the Fox, yep. And we watch over things, and he's the boss. Takes care of everything. But that was the thing that started making me question it, was why didn't this guy work with, you know, nature activists? Why didn't he work with game wardens? Why didn't he travel to anywhere else in the world to see other types of bears? Like, I don't, I don't remember at any point during the documentary wearing a horror dog saying, oh, well, he spent like a summer in Siberia looking at bears over there. You know, he went to China and tried to help the dancing bears over there. No, he didn't do any of that. He, every year he would go up to the same spot and that was his land. That was, that's the only way I can really describe it is the isolation started to kind of push Timothy's mind to a point where a lot of us can never really get to unless we experience the same thing that he goes through. I will be an American dissident if I need be. There's a patriotic time going on right now, but as far as this fucking government's concerned, fuck you motherfucking park service. Now Treadwell crosses a line with the park service, which we will not cross. He didn't have relationships like a lot of us would. You know, he even says it at one point during the film that, you know, he's had troubles with relationships and he would love to find somebody, but he can't... Connect with them properly? Yeah, he can't <laughs> connect with them, but he can, in his mind, he connects more with these bears than he does yeah, with, with human people. beings. Yeah, you know, he, he explains several points that he, he hates going back to normal life, normal routine. Yeah. And the documentary doesn't ever show him outside of the 12 years that he spends in Alaska. And so you do, throughout the documentary, kind of see the deterioration of him. Yes, yeah. Uh, which, which is fascinating in of itself. I had no life. Now I have a life. It's a brilliant documentary, um, and I didn't even notice the time fly past. No, no. You know, it's an hour and 40 minute documentary, and when I first started, I was like, oh, here we go. You know, I'm going to be probably distracted halfway through. But it is a fascinating story, so... Werner Herzog's editing skill is just absolutely fucking brilliant. Well, that's interesting you should say that, because his editing skills seem ropey. Really? And, and that is on purpose. Oh! And that is, you know... You take the Timothy Treadwell footage, yeah. and I like the fact that he uses the multiple takes of oh, Timothy yeah. Treadwell, yeah. where he just lets... You know, he doesn't just go, I'll take the best take from Timothy, trim you know, the beginning and the end. Yeah. He leaves the footage there so that there is nothing on screen. And so if he comes onto screen and starts talking, yeah. and then as an aside, he says, oh, fuck, I fucked it up. I'll do it another take. And then Werner would say that he would repeat this up to 15 times. Yeah. And now, interestingly enough, is that there are lots of interview segments in, in the film that Werner has, and his team have gone and filmed. Yeah. And he has emulated Timothy Treadwell's filming style when it comes to these interviews, by having the pause at the beginning yeah. and the long pauses at the end, yeah, the fact yeah. that some of the some of the interviews are clearly rehearsed and have been performed maybe fifteen times already, the which coroner. is why the coroner yeah. and the friend just seem off, yeah, like it, they, they they seem automated in a way, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I, that was something that I couldn't get past. Actually, was I was trying to. I was trying to take Timothy Treadwell as a man who who was wanting to live with nature and, and be part of this bare natural world. You know, if he if he didn't have to return to humanity and civilization, he wouldn't have. Mm, yeah. Well, but the but the thing that got me was like you said, he it took him like fifteen takes to do one take. Like he wanted to make a film to cement himself as the vocal piece for these animals. You know, he wanted the, like like we've done it. We, we, we review all the times and sometimes we sit there going, ah, oh, fuck, we've got to do that again because it doesn't look that professional. And yet I'm watching Timothy Treadwell and I'm like, why do you need that? You have this whole natural landscape to play with. You're on your own. Who the fuck cares if you make a mistake or not? You are doing something that a lot of us, like I said, would give our right arm to do. Yet you seem to be aiming for something higher. Well, at one point he did reach, 
you know, a form of celebrity status where yeah. he was appearing on TV talk shows. Yeah. You know, everybody knew who he was and where he was going to be going. I mean, it was beautiful that he was invited to schools to talk about bears and yeah. he would do that for free. But the problem I have with that is that he's not the vocal piece about bears. Everything he, he's learned he, is just in the field. He's a self-proclaimed bear expert. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so the message I felt after a while is that he's going to these schools and he's telling these kids like bears are scary and I don't tell you to go out there and be with them but if you do here are the rules that I've made up to keep you alive and I'm like that's not gonna fucking help <laughs> I think he was over 10 feet high don't you oh he's a big bear he's a big bear a very big bear wow <sighs> anyway he's over here rub a dub dubbing I mean I started to uh, you know, start to see similarities with other people in the world. Like, I started to notice similarities with, like, Steve Irwin. I know Steve Irwin was a big Australian, you know, um, animal activist and, and worked with animals all his life and tragically died, you know, in the field. And, you know, and I started thinking of people like uh, uh, Diane Fossey, you know, from Gorillas in the Mist with Scorny Weaver, if you've ever seen that, the way that she worked with her silverbacks. I also started to think of uh, Christopher McClanlist from Into the Wild. Yes, yeah. You yeah. know these, all of those, all of these people, including Timothy, all had the same kind of thing where they were they were wanting to go out and do this thing that they loved, and it ended in tragedy. Yeah, you know, and you ask yourself at the end of it, like, did they bring it upon themselves, or was it just circumstance? Well, I mean, in some instances, like the gorillas, I mean, that was human intervention. That was yeah, humans yeah. That, that killed her. Yeah, but she had been th she had been told that her life was threatened and that yeah. she should leave, and she didn't want to leave these uh, these silverback yeah. gorillas. I mean, it's the same thing in the in the world today. There are bear whisperers. Yes. There, there are bear trainers. You know, like uh, like I always remember Bart the bear. You know, scared the hell out of me in the <laughs> edge. Yeah, you know, I've been afraid of bears ever since. But he was domesticated. He was a domesticated bear. He was reared, you know, from a pup. Yeah, and so yeah, there are differences between you know raising wild animals and interacting with wild animals in the wild. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and Timothy just kind of you know the more time he spent out there, the more he yeah he did. He stopped fearing the bears, and he yes. says many times that he's done with society, he's done with culture, he's done with all those things, because when he's here in Alaska, he is totally free. Yes. And so, you know, that's the part where you just go, that that's amazing, If you know, because we hear stories all the time of people just want to get off the grid, yes. you know? Yeah. They want to detach from the Matrix for a while. Exactly. Or permanently. Yeah. yeah. And so for that, I'm, I applaud Timothy Treadwell. But at the same time, he 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 he, he was an invader. He was an in, in he was space. an invader. Now he, they they have the Native American there who who's got his own museum. That, yeah, you know, and he explains how some people literally came in and and sawed off the bare hand. Yeah, off off, off the the uh, the stuffed one that they've got there, and he's just like people are crazy when they you know when they do these sorts of things. They want to get close to nature, uh, but throughout t recorded time, mankind and bears just don't really mix and as a respect bears have their territory and we have ours yeah. the thing that he explains is the most important thing really is that what timothy's doing is is not just dangerous for him it's more dangerous for the bears yes because the bears are then go oh that's a human he didn't do anything to me i can go about my business bear wanders off into a settlement of people and go oh it's people People were, oh, I've been shot and killed. Yeah. You know, the bears will just get used to humans and therefore wander further beyond their boundaries. Especially when they're searching for food, especially when nature is having trouble. Like we see that section where there's no rainfall for ages. And so the salmon is having difficulty getting up the river, which is obviously, you know, encroaching on the bear's lifestyle. And so he kind of interferes, doesn't he, Timothy? Yeah. He builds like a corridor in the river so that the salmon can go up. And I sit there and I'm like, okay, partly a good idea, partly not a good idea. You know, yes, you're helping these bears and, you know, I'm all up for animals and, and, and humans, you know, living. But the, the, that, that's happening for a reason and you're interfering with it now and thus interfering with the bear's life. You know, you, 
it, it's like at one point he comes across what the, the the paw he comes across the severed arm of a of a bear cub that's been eaten by a mother or or the dead fox that has wandered too far from its den and it, the wolves have killed it and you can see the emotion on Timothy's face that he's really upset that these things had to die and doesn't <laughs> like, seem to fully get it he doesn't seem to get it he, he's just like why why are the why the, what's with these pointless killings and it's just like that's the circle of life, you idiot. Yeah. Like you're in the wild. Yeah. You know? <laughs> These things. Fucking, I mean, he even says that to the. That made me laugh when the fly landed on the fox's eye, and he told the fly to shoo off and wait until he comes back. I'm like, it's a fly. The fly's doing its natural thing. Get out of his eye, freaking fly! Don't do it when I'm around. Have some respect, fucker. Ultimately. The main crux of the documentary is his death. Well, the, the documentary reminds you that he's dead right at the start. The first shot with him in the film, it comes up with his date of birth and the date of his death. Yeah. And it's like a tombstone, you know, right at the beginning of, of the film. So you spend the whole film just going, he's going to die. He is dead. Getting to that point. And of yeah. course, a lot of people are very, very upset with this documentary for not going all the way. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Not showing it, not playing the audio, because from the the eventful night that he, him and his girlfriend did die, you know, from extra sources that are, I've read, that they had left open food in the tent, the bear, which he had filmed earlier that day, and you know, he, he he's in the water with the bear, and the bear is swimming down to to try and get leftover yeah. remains from the bottom of the water it's this one this, this bear is not the bears that we see throughout the documentary that he's friendly with no. no this is this is a bear that he doesn't even have a name for and i don't think he's ever seen and he even says at one point you know most of his friendly bears have gone and hibernated these ones are aggressive males that are trying to are struggling to find food. They're desperate now yeah. because they need to be hibernating and they've not fed yet. Yeah. And so, yeah, you know, usually you see bears, they, they lazily hunt for salmon. Yeah, you know, yeah. They'll wait for it to pop out of the water and take it. They yeah. do not go hunting that aggressively. This bear is swimming to the bottom to try and get leftover remains. And Timothy's there like, oh, look at him. Isn't he an amazing swimmer? Oh, I love bears. I could bring Mr. Chocolate with me. He, he, you'd be great protection there. He's been with me for over a decade, and he's been my good friend, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chocolate. I'll see you again next year. And you know, it's just like he—you know—he's a bear expert, right? You should realize how desperate this bear is for food. Yeah. So that night, we'll leave some open food in our tent, and of course, the bear comes in, and we, from the coroner's report and the police reports that arrived on the crime scene. You know, it was a vicious attack that lasted more than six minutes. Mm -hmm. They killed them both, probably Timothy first, then the girlfriend, who was defending herself and trying to save him with a frying pan. Yeah. Both of them were, well, Timothy was wholly consumed other than his head and part of his spine and, and a hand yeah. and part of an arm, uh, where she was buried almost uh, fully, but only half buried till they managed to find her. And, you know, it's grim and it's just, you know, it's hard to, to, to read the reports of what happened because your mental image is painting it. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they did have a camera, of course, and the camera was recording at the time. It was dropped almost immediately and the lens cap was still on the camera. So that's all that's recorded is an audio tape. Yeah. To which no one has really heard. Apart from Werner Herzog. Apart from Werner Herzog, who we watch listening to it. And, of course, it's just silence whilst the camera holds behind him. We don't even see his facial reactions to what no, he's hearing. No, We just have this vacant expression of a past girlfriend Yeah, uh, who is the custodian of, of all of the tapes, I guess. Yeah. Um, and Werner, after the tape's finished, gives her the tape and says, you need to destroy this. Don't ever listen to it. It is the white elephant in the room, which yeah. is a bit of a mistake. I think he just meant to say the elephant in the room. Yeah, I think he just meant to say, look, it would always be in the back of your mind that you'll want to uh, listen to it. Or Absolutely, because a white elephant is the great project you've never finished. Yeah. Um, and so that's that wouldn't make much sense. Uh, but he says, yeah, you need to destroy this. And he also says to the listener that the reasons why he chose never to put the audio into this film, and that's because it's it's just not necessary. And it's so horrifying and so, uh, so, so terrifying that uh, it was immediately clear 
this is not going to be in the film. Jewel Pelovec had a very clear attitude about it as well. She said, we are not into a snuff movie. Sure. And of course, there is a, 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 a responsibility that as a filmmaker you have because you would violate, you would violate the right and the dignity of the death of these two individuals. You just don't do it. No, I mean, I mean, we watch horror movies all the time. You know, I'm sure there's a bunch of our audience who are probably dark in aspect. I, I use air quotations for that. But none of us really want to hear two people get ripped apart by a bear. For real. For real. It's the same thing as watching an ISIS terrorist decapitation video yeah. somewhere, you know? You know, it's like... There's a certain brand of people that go and seek that footage out to see it maybe once so that they can go, okay, I've seen it once. But there's a lot of people that just go, don't need to see that. Yeah. I mean, I thought that. I was I was sat there and I'd wikied it before we'd sat down to watch it and read that section about him not putting the audio in. And a part of my brain was like, man, I really wish I could hear that. Then watching the documentary and seeing Werner Herzog's uh, reaction to it. My mind started to go, really? Do you really want to hear two people's death cries? You know, we're not we're not talking like over in an instant. We're talking possible... Uh, six know, minutes. Six minutes of just gargling and screaming. Panic. And kidding. ripping yeah. and roaring. You know, I mean, I don't even know what would scare me more. Hearing her scream or hearing the bear roar at the same time. And knowing... That deep down inside, there is not a damn thing I can do about it, you know? And the fact that this tape still exists, or hopefully, I mean, it's been, what, fucking almost 15 years, something yeah. like that. You know, it's been a while since she got this tape, that it should just be destroyed. Because... I don't think anybody needs to hear that. There's no artistic merit in it or no, anything, is no. there? No, <laughs> it's, it's two people's deaths, Yeah, basically, and... I'm all good. I, I don't need it. I, I, I felt the film was cemented enough that I didn't have to hear it, you know, because in the next shot, it cut to the two bears fighting. Yeah. And when you've just come off the back of hearing or, or supposedly hearing two people die and then you see two bears fight and your my mind was just like, fucking hell, if they can do that much damage to each other, two giant brown bears... Imagine doing it to somebody half their size. Oh, bear's got no difficulty whatsoever in decapitating you. Yeah. None. It's good work. I feel good about it. I feel good about myself doing it. And I want to continue. And I hope I can. I really hope I can. But if not, be warned. I will die for these animals. I will die for these animals. I will die for these animals. Ultimately, though, I mean, I, I had, you know, favorite scenes. And I do recommend this this film. It's a difficult one, though, I think. You know, it's not your normal type of movie to watch. You know, no. you're only ever really going to sit down and watch this if you're interested in Timothy Treadwell. Or if you're interested in bears, or if you're interested in nature, you know, I can't... It's a fascinating story all the same, though. Yeah. It's, a, it's a human interest story, yeah. you know, because Timothy Treadwell has damaged psychologically, you know, men mental health issues that he had, you know, he's still a human being. Yeah. And, you know, he is quirky, he was charismatic, I think he was very gay... I think he had issues with his sexuality. See, I think he had complications with the relationships that he had. See, no, he he does, I mean, it's not even his real name. N no, no, he ch he changed his name to begin. He changed his name before he even went up there to, yeah. to kind of get he this you know, He was an aspiring actor yeah. to begin with before, you know, he didn't get the part on Cheers that he wanted. Yeah, he lost out to Woody Harrelson. But, I mean, for weirdly enough, though, you know, it's like... I mean, you say that... you. Gary has this thing where he thinks that Timothy Treadwell was massively gay. And Timothy Treadwell even says in the documentary that he's had relationships and that they've faltered. And he kind of wishes he was gay so that it would be easier. But he's not. He, he even sa says, he like, says, Timothy Treadwell is for the women. He says, oh, uh, what, do you say? what does he say? He says, um, Timothy Treadwell, oh, I guess I'm straight. Bummer. It's like so easy for him and... And stuff, but you know what? Alas, Timothy Trundle is not gay. Bummer. I love girls. And girls. <laughs> what the fuck? Does, <laughs> what, do, does it, any straight people say that? 
Well, yeah, bummer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bummer. <laughs> you just said it. Bummer. No, but I understand where you're coming from, and probably a lot of other people might agree or disagree with us, is that he had suffered relationships in the yeah. past, you know, and the best relationships he, in his mind, that he was having was with these bears. Yeah. You know, he sits and he, after you see those two bears fighting and he, you realise that they were fighting over courtship of a female, he even says that, look, I haven't had, you know, I, I find this bear attractive, but I've not got to that point that I want to have sex with a bear over a human woman. I've always called him the Michelle Pfeiffer of bears out here. Things are bad for me with the human women, but not so bad that I have to be hitting on bears yet. Okay? Okay, that's But... There's never been any evidence, like since his death, that he was anything more than uh, a man who was living his life on the edge. Oh yeah, you know yeah. he he, did, you know even when we see him with the poachers and mm -hmm. things like that, he didn't cause any massive damage to them. He didn't wound any. Of it was them. just some other human interaction to which you know they found amusing. Yeah, I mean those fucking notes they left him was. Blair Witch style weird. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, as much I, I hope the bears eat the poachers. Yeah, you know? that, well, that's <laughs> it. I mean, I, I know Timothy Treadwell was weird, but it wasn't like he was leaving notes for poachers. These guys were carving his actual name into a piece of wood and leaving it there for him. I'm like, what the fuck kind of sick weirdo does that? You know, I'm all up for for animals. Like I said, animals and and humans uh, all all living. I don't believe that any of them should live together. Hell, fucking no. You know, I mean problems arise but when you have these people who basically just go out there and shoot animals for fun yeah yeah those are the kind of people that I'm like let's put them on an island you know and let's hunt them for sport and see how much they like it because with Timothy Treadwell the bears were just doing what they do naturally even the bear that killed him it didn't hate him it had no actual nasty means to want to do anything to him. It's like what they say about sharks. A shark doesn't attack a human. It mistakes it for something else. Food, yeah. still, yeah. It's the same with this bear. The bear mistook Timothy and his girlfriend as food and attacked them and ate them and killed them and at the end of that was killed as well. Yeah, that, that's kind of the, <laughs> the dark irony is that yeah. Timothy wanted to protect these bears and as a result of him being there, two bears were shot and killed. And it's like, well, you... But then I asked the question as well. It's like the bears that he were fa the bears that he was seeing, you know, they, they were hibernating, they were eating, they were surviving. Yeah. The bear that killed him was a was a, a, a rare grizzly that had been starving. An old grizzly, yeah. If it hadn't been him, it would have been somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, if it hadn't been Timothy Treadwell, that bear would have attacked and killed somebody else and would have been shot anyway. So I... I don't fully blame Timothy for being out there and causing the death of two bears. But I do believe that he pushed himself a little bit too far because he should have left in September. Yeah. He left in September at the end of the season when all the bears are hibernating. He went to an airport, had a problem with humans there and went, fuck this, and went back until October. Mm -hmm. Late in the season, stinking of civilization and leaving food lying around so that a starving bear could go... That smells good. <laughs> right, right. But my favourite scenes. Um, weirdly enough, I mean, it's, it's it was weird. I wasn't too sure if I should write favourite scenes because it was a documentary and I didn't well, know... Well, the sequences it... of the tape, so yeah. That, that was it. Sequences of the tape, I, I did really enjoy. Like, uh, my favourite scene, number one, was when Ghost stole his hat. Right. <laughs> he has two foxes. I mean, he purposely put his camp in between two foxes' dens and became accustomed to these two foxes, which I thought was beautiful. The ghost and spirit. Yeah. Um, you know, and they would follow him everywhere. And, and we don't see it, but I think secretly he was sneaking them food. That's why they were staying around so much, because they were having probably tr problems finding food themselves, and he could just sneak them a bit of bacon every now and again. Um, but when it steals his hat and you, you're following Timothy through the brush and he's like, God damn you, fuck you. Give me back my goddamn hat. That's my lucky hat. Oh, it's in the fucking den, you fucking bastard. And I'm like, <laughs> that's the real Timothy. I can't believe this. Ghost. Ghost, where's that fucking hat? That hat is so friggin' valuable for this trip. Ghost, you come back here with that friggin' hat. You know, mm -hmm. he's not a 
proper eco. He's not an eco warrior. No. And he's not a, 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 a you know, a, a, a government funded animal warden. He's just a guy in the woods, you know. And this is him being lost in the woods, losing his hat. Yeah. The two bears fighting, uh, yeah. I thought was that was incredible. Incredible material to capture. I mean, you know, you watch. Planet Earth or any of the David Attenborough shows, anything on the Discovery Channel, Timothy Treadwell was fucking up there. It's like Werner Herzog even says, when he just leaves his camera and all there is is just nature, it's beautiful to capture on the screen. Absolutely. You yeah. know, and it's a ferocious fight. You can see the tears clawing, the fur going all over the floor, you know, but it's natural. It's what these two bears are doing because they're fighting over that bear pussy over there that they want. <laughs> Uh, and my fi my final favourite scene was his rant at the rain. Right. <laughs> he was so angry that there hadn't been any rainfall for a long time. And that the bears were dying. And, and the and, bears would start eating their own children. And God damn you. And he even says he's an atheist and he doesn't believe in God or any of them. But he, he cries out to all of them, you know, fucking... You know, God and, and, and Allah and any other floating mystical spirits up there. And then the rain comes down. And more rain comes down. And so much rain comes down, it collapses his tent. And part of me was like, was that a sign from God saying, Get out! <laughs> Get out of there now! <laughs> right. This is my life. This is what I do. And I, I love it. I love it. Even this. I love it. <laughs> my tent crushed in. I love it. It's pathetic, but I love it. Uh, so yeah, I got quite a few memorable sequences from the film as well, and yeah, you know the foxes, the, 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 the funny sequences, yeah. the fact that he names them, his his one-sided conversations with them, yeah, you know, it, it's crazy. Yeah, uh, I also love the giant turd sequence, <laughs> yeah. where he's just like, look, it was inside her. It's, it's poo. Oh, it's it, warm. <laughs> I can feel it. it. It was inside of her. This is her gift for me. It was from inside her. I like. I was, I was like. I hope you wash your hands after that, please. <laughs> I can feel the poop. It's warm. It just came. It just came from her butt. This was just inside of her. My girl. Uh, but there was also the sequence that I really hated as well because it just felt so stilted and so so awkward. Okay, yeah. And that is when the coroner is giving, you know, his old girlfriend the watch. And oh, he was yeah, just, yeah. You know, it's just the way he opens it, the way he passes it to her, and she's like, you know, the way she's holding it as well. And it was just very, it just felt really peculiar, really odd. It was the same when they were doing the interview with him in the, in the morgue. And yeah. he's talking about listening to the audio and the bodies. And I, I, I felt like I was watching a Wes Anderson movie, the way it was being recorded. And I'm like, is this guy even real? Is this all fake? Am I going to find out at the end of this fucking documentary that Timothy Treadwell isn't even a real guy and this actor is alive somewhere, <laughs> fucking just living off the money of the... If I find that out, I'll be fucking pissed. <laughs> you know, but then it cuts back and I'm like, uh, no, he's just a really bad actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, she stayed with the bear in the situation. Uh, but yeah, like I said earlier, all of those interview sequences do fit in their place um, and, you know, give you other insights into the story. Yeah. Even though they have been edited and produced that way, yeah. it complements the entire documentary really, really well. Yeah. And so I do have to recommend uh, Grizzly Man. I think it's a fascinating journey into Timothy Treadwell's madness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the documentary is very well crafted. Uh, Werner Herzog's narrative remains realistic in contrast to Timothy, who appears delirious, though optimistic. The interviews are slightly stilted, but they add to the story and provide other insights into the events. There's some good use of music. There's some amazing shots of Alaska and its wildlife. It's almost compulsive watching once you start. Yeah. You don't want it to end. Uh, it is a tragic story, but... Sometimes they make for very great stories. <laughs> yeah. So with that said, it's 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 an easy recommendation. You might find this film horrifying. You might find it hilarious. 
Um, you might find it a, a good blend of both, but it's a fantastically well crafted documentary. You know, Werner has taken the footage and assembled his narrative out of what material he had to work with. Yeah. And Timothy Treadwell was a fascinating character. Uh, I I recommend it as well. I mean, it's not your atypical movie, and there's probably a few of you out there going, well, I'm never going to fucking watch it. But it's, it is an insight into one man's mind. You know, like I said, it goes up there with Into the Wild and, and Gorillas in the Mist, you know, or just anybody who's, you know, who just wants to be free. Like you said, he wants to detach himself from, from the net and from the Matrix and all that kind of shit. Okay, I don't recommend going out and living with bears, you know, or any fucking wild animal. But then again, if you are going to do that, if part of you says, you know, I want to do that. Look at the warning signs in this film, you know. Do it the right way. Yeah, there's parts in this documentary where... You know, Timothy Treadwell kicks off over the government and poachers and humans and this, that, and the next thing. He goes on this massive, fucking abusive run. You can't do anything about that. You know, you have game wardens in place protecting animals all around the world. And at the same time, you still have poachers going in there, sneaking in to kill them. You still have those wild, dangerous animals in those, in those enclosures killing other animals for survival even Werner Herzog himself says the world is not order it's chaos but it's ordered chaos and and, and and I totally related with that I was like yes that's exactly how I see the world and so you know I'm not willing on running out there and you know jumping in a river full of bears you know and swimming with them but you know if I ever found myself in that place I may be like Timothy Treadwell and just sit down and spend my time with them. And as it comes closer to me, you know, I'm like, I can either run and it's going to eat me. <laughs> Don't ever run from a bear. Or stand my ground and try to make it understand that I'm not trying to harm it. Yeah. And the best way I can do that is not going anywhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Side of her. My girl. I'm touching her. It's her poop. It's Wendy's poop. You know? 13 summers? Oh, he was fucking a bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got super troopers in my head now. The bear fucker. Oh, man.